Hello, I am Ahmad, and in this video, we are going to design reinforcement for a slab. In video number six of this playlist, we went through detailing of reinforcement, but we didn't design the primary reinforcement. Now, in this example, we are going to design the reinforcement for a one way a slab uh, supported on beams. Let's do it. So assume that we have a beam supported on columns and the distance between two columns is 5.2 meters and it is extended as a cantilever with 1.8 meters. The same beam in the distance of 3.5 meters center to center and the other one the same distance. And here we assume we have a slab on the top of these three beams. And suppose that here we have a separation between two areas using the cantilever as balcony and using the other side as the residential building. And let's assume the loads. So as far as we have a residential building, it is uh, under the live load of two kilonewton per square meter. And the balcony is under 2.5 kilonewton per square meter due to finishing of this layer assume that we have a finishing layer with uh, one kilonewton per square meter in both sides so the idea is designing the slab uh, over these three beams so we have beam number one beam number two beam number three which are with the detail of shown here for example the total height of the beam is 500 millimeter and the width is 250 millimeter. Center to center of the beams is 3.5 meters. Now the idea is designing the reinforcement for the slab, for this example. First of all, we need to design or determine what is the uh, required thickness of this slab. It's a, uh, a slab over three supports. And if we look at it from the side, from this view, we will see this type of section. Now, as far as the length of the slab is seven meters, 5.2 plus 1.8, and the width of the slab is 3.5, so B is seven meters of the slab, and A is 3.5 meters, or even if we calculate what is the net length, it is 3.5 meters minus 250 millimeters, half of the beam width, in both ends so 0 0.25 it will be 3.25 meters so b over a is greater or equal to 2 so we can assume that the support of the beam on the intermediate beam is also one way or it's a simple connection so one way a slab as a result the load distribution will be in the 3.5 meters direction so in other words, we can assume that the beam or the slab is a simple supported beam under the given load. So if the slab was supported on the um, walls, it was a little bit different. Let's have a discussion about that. So if we had walls, then they are supporting this way because the walls are more rigid than beams and they cannot deform after applying the load. If we had walls, then we had to calculate, for example, what are these uh, reaction supports and then applying the load according to that. But if they are supported on beams, as far as beams are deforming uh, easier than uh, walls, then we can assume that the slabs are simply supported on beams. Now let's calculate what are the loads coming to the top of this uh, slab and also determine what is the required thickness of the slab. According to table 7.4 N of Eurocode, we can assume that if it is 1.5% uh, reinforcement or heavily reinforced, then we can assume that uh, L over D should be less than 14. If rho is 0.5%, then L over D should be less than 20. In this example, we assume rho is 0.5%. This is our assumption. 
we can check later if this is correct or not so l over d should be less than 20 and the length or the loading length of the slab is 3.5 meters so d needs to be greater than 175 millimeter this is very approximate calculation and it is also written in Eurocode that this is a little bit conservative compared to uh, real calculation and this is also for certain uh, situation the concrete class is C3037 and it is assumed that the stress in the steel is 310 megapascal it should be noted that uh, the minimum thickness of a slab might be better to be taken greater than 125 millimeter as this is conservative value and uh, we assume that rho is 0.5 percent we can take this value as the minimum let's assume some uh, information concrete class is c3037 consequent class of the structure is 2 as a result the kfi in eurocode combination load is 1 and steel is uh, b500 uh, which means f by k is 500 megapascal what else a c nominal for the slab we can assume it's 25 millimeter and t12 is going to be used for the slab reinforcement with this information we can assume that h is h minimum is d plus c nominal plus 1.1 times 16 or 12 millimeter divided by 2 175 plus 25 plus 1.5 times 6 it will be 206 millimeter as it is written in the euro code that this is very conservative perhaps we can go with the, a little bit less than this value so for this example i take the height of the slab to be 200 millimeter and we have the rest so now we have the height of the slab we have the load coming on the top if we come back to the question we can see that the load is different because we are designing one side for the uh, balcony and the other side for the residential building as a result the uh, live load is different in this case we can assume uh, the most critical part and apply the design for the whole slab or you can design it uh, more accurately which is not uh, efficient especially when it comes to the construction site it is better if we have the same uh, reinforcement for the whole slab so the live load is 2.5 kilonewton per square meter the finishing layer 1 kilonewton per square meter and the slab thickness is 200 millimeter now we need to define or determine the loads which are coming to the top of this slab Usually for the slab design, we assume we have only one meter width of the slab and design it according to one meter. Everything is given per meter, meaning that we are talking about a surface. So the assumption from here will be concrete class C3037. As a result, FCD will be alpha CC times FCK divided by gamma C. Alpha CC, depending on the uh, country of the task or the national annex would be different in Eurocode it is recommended to be one uh, for example in Finland it is taken as 0 0.85 according to national annex FCK is the uh, concrete uh, characteristic compression resistance or capacity which is 30 megapascal and gamma C is the partial factor which is 1.5 so it will be 17 megapascal we have the FYK to be 500 megapascal. As a result, FYD will be FYK divided by gamma S. Gamma S is the partial factor given in Eurocode, which is 1.15. And FYK is 500, so the value will be 435 megapascal. C nominal is 25 millimeter. Let's have a look on the... Uh, a slab that we are going to design just for one span if we look at it from the 3d phase we are designing the slab in a way that this direction is the design direction as a result we need to put the um, 
primary reinforcement in that direction. As far as the effective depth D is uh, helping to increase the capacity, it is wise if we put the re primary reinforcement in the bottom layer that we have maximum effective depth. So as a result, if we look at it from the section view, we put the primary reinforcement in the bottom layer and the secondary reinforcement will be on the top of it. The same also goes for the other the side if we need some. As a result, the effective depth is determined from the top of the slab to the center of this primary reinforcement for this direction. So D will be H, which is 200 millimeter, minus C nominal, which is 25 millimeter, minus 1.1 times half of the uh, primary reinforcement diameter, 12 millimeter divided by 2. 200 minus 25 minus 168 millimeter. So these are the information about the slab and the concrete and steel. Now uh, we need to determine what the loads and maximum bending moment is in the slab. If you look at the slab as a simple supported beam, and if we take the balcony as the reference of the calculation, so the live load or Q is 2.5 kilonewton per square meter and the dead load will be 1 kilonewton per square meter due to finishing layer plus the self weight of the slab which is 0 0.2 meters time 25 kilonewton per square meter so it will be 6 kilonewton per square meter uh, so these are the loads on the top of this slab and the length of this slab in the Loading direction is 3.5 meters. Now we can calculate the bending moment. So bending moment is QLS square divided by 8. So due to dead load, we have 6 kilonewton per meter times 3.5 meters S square divided by 8. And it will be 9.2 kilonewton. If, if you look at the unit here, S square meter is uh, crossed by a square meter as a result it will be kilonewton but as far as it is bending moment we need to write it with a proper unit which is kilonewton meter it shows that this is bending moment per meter means that we are considering only one meter of the of the slab it doesn't matter if uh, the length of the slab is 10 meters or it is half meter it's a surface and we write every time with this proper unit Similarly, a uh, uh, live load will be 2.5 kilonewton per square meter times 3.5 meters S square divided by 8, which is 3.83 kilonewton meter per meter. Then we need to calculate uh, the ULS load combination. So ULS is coming from two combinations, 1.35D and one point 15D plus 1.5L. Please notice that KFI is taken as 1 as far as the consequent class is 1. And also this 1.15 is the uh, partial factor in Finland. In, for example, other countries, you can check the, the country's national annex. Uh, in general, in Eurocode, it is 1.35. So M in ULS will be the maximum of these two values which is 1.35 times 9.2 kilonewton meter divided by meter. It will be 1.35, 9.2, which is 12.4 kilonewton meter per meter. And also 1.15 times 9.2 plus 1.5 times 3.83, 16.3. So in this case, the maximum is 16.3 and we take it as the design value M. ED for this design is 16.3 kilonewton meter per meter. According to the uh, former videos, we calculated the uh, reinforcement for bending moment with a simple equation. Uh, we went through the procedure of designing the required reinforcement in one uh, beam. So there is no difference between a one meter slab or a beam at this stage, 
so we can continue with that first of all we need to calculate what is the bending moment capacity of this slab if we provide the maximum uh, reinforcement for that we can calculate mrdc which is mu bd times fcd b d square so mu bd is 0.372 when fyk is 500 megapascal fcd is 17 megapascal here we are looking for, uh, for one meter width it means that the b is 1000 millimeter and we calculated the earlier and it was 168 millimeter as a result mrdc will be 0 0.372 17 1162 square and it is 178 kilonewton meter for every single meter we can see that we have enough capacity and it is uh, far more than med as a result we do not need to use for example the capacity of uh, compressive reinforcement or we do not need to use any or to increase the depth or height of the slab this is greater than med and soil reinforcement is enough so then we can calculate what is uh, mu which is med divided by fcd times b d square so med is 16.3 kilonewton meter divided by meter divided by 17 megapascal one meter and 168 millimeter square which will be 0 0.034 and it should be less than mu bd as it was obvious so then as from mu we can calculate beta beta is one minus a square root of one plus minus two times mu 0 0.0346 and from here we can calculate as which is beta or let's write down the beta equation beta is as divided by bd times fyd divided by fcd so from here we can calculate as times 1000 meter millimeter 168 millimeter 17 megapascal 435 and it will be 227 square millimeter please notice that this 227 square millimeter is for one meter so the unit should be written as a square millimeter per meter also we need to calculate as minimum always to control as minimum as minimum according to euro code it will be maximum of 0 0.26 fctm divided by fyk and 0 0.0013 times b times d so fctm uh, according to table 3 1 of euro code is for 30 megapascal is 2.9 megapascal 0 0.26 times 2.9 divided by 500 so it will be and then 1 meter 168 millimeter so it will be 253 square millimeter per meter so the as let's write down this is required will be what you need to provide is the maximum between as required and as minimum in this case will be 253 square millimeter per meter so here is how to calculate the required reinforcement for the slab then we need to define how many of this reinforcement we need in one meter so as is 253 square millimeter per meter and we are going to use t12 then the number of uh, steel that we need will be 253 divided by pi 12 millimeter will be 2.24 and then we can calculate what is the required spacing one meter divided by 2.24 so it will be 446 millimeter so now we need to come back and check what is the maximum spacing of the reinforcement according to uh, detailing requirement chapter 9 in Eurocode. Uh, in the other video we went through the 
uh, calculation or detailing according to general euro code in this example i'm going to use for example finnish national annex uh, let's bring the statement and continue with that again uh, you can check what kind of uh, detailing reinforcement is given in the local national annex so for the principal reinforcement the maximum spacing in the slab should be limited to three times h and 400 and if it is uh, in the maximum moment provisions then it will be limited to two times h and 250 millimeter so in this case for example i go with the conservative value which is the minimum of two times h which is 400 millimeter and 250 millimeter so here we have 446 and it should be limited to 250 as a result we need to use e12 at a spacing of 250 millimeter so in finland this is written as t12k 250 millimeter this is for the primary reinforcement now we need to design also the secondary reinforcement which should be at least 20 percent of primary reinforcement but not less than as minimum so here 20 percent of what we are using t12 at 250 millimeter it will be as primary will be pi 12 millimeter s square divided by 4 times 1000 millimeter divided by 250 millimeter it gives you how many reinforcement we are using in the in one meter pi 12 s square divided by 4 then times 4 452.3 square millimeter per meter now the required secondary reinforcement will be the maximum of 20 percent of this 452.3 square millimeter per meter and as minimum which we calculated earlier 253 square millimeter per meter so it will be 253 square millimeter per meter and then we can calculate how many do we need secondary reinforcement will be again two point it's the same as the primary reinforcement 2.24 and the spacing will be 446 millimeter again we need to check what is the maximum spacing here and here if you are in the uh, high bending moment meaning in the center it should be limited to three times h and 400 if you are away from that direction perhaps uh, the uh, 4h and 600 millimeter would be enough so for this case i will go with the conservative value minimum of three times h which is 600 millimeter and 400 millimeter which is 400 millimeter so for the uh, secondary reinforcement i will use s should be less than minimum of three times as h and 400 millimeter which is 400 millimeter so a spacing for the secondary reinforcement will be 400 millimeter in this case t12 at 400 or t12 k 400 will be the result so these two are for the bottom layers for the top layer as far as we didn't consider any fixity or any rigidity for the top we can assume that they are not in the so-called moment concentration or maximum moment position we can determine them according to uh, lighter uh, regulation 3h and 400 for a spacing of uh, primary reinforcement which will be 400 millimeter and for here s should be less than 600 millimeter so we can save material if we are going to use this uh, these two statements now if we want to sketch the detail of this reinforcement please consider that uh, according to Eurocode even if you assume that the support is completely thin and there is no uh, rotational stiffness you need to provide the maximum up to 15 percent of bending maximum bending moment to be taken by the uh, rigidity so, so it is something that we need to check which is out of the scope of this example for now so for bottom we are going to use t12 
k250 above this layer we are going to use e12 k400 these are for the bottom layer which are uh, partially located in the maximum bending moment for the top layer we can have a little bit lighter reinforcement which is e12 a400 supporting the uh, minimum reinforcement and for the bottom i mean bottom of the top reinforcement it will be t12 k600 and now the only thing that uh, we need to check is the ratio of reinforcement we assume in the beginning that the, the ratio is about 0.5 percent but now we have to check for the primary which is the maximum number of reinforcement we can check t12 k250 area of the steel will be i 12 millimeter s square divided by 4 times divided by 250 we calculated this earlier and it was 452 a square millimeter per meter now the percentage is as divided by bd 452 divided 1000 divided by 168 is 0 0.0027 which is 0 0.27 percent and we can see that it is half or uh, below 0 0.5 percent as a result calculation of the height would be valid and we can use l over d less than 20 as a conservative value also we can uh, use matcat to write the proper code for this one and uh, as you remember in the video number nine of this series we wrote the code to calculate how many reinforcement we need for a beam here we can change the uh, code slightly for slabs so here uh, in the slabs we do not need to have uh, the width and i can bring this up eight of the slab for example as the note the height is 200 the nominal cover is 25 and we are going to use 12 millimeter usually we do not need a stirrups in the slabs we will go through this later when we have the example for the shear reinforcement design so the only thing is that we need to change this uh, med to 16.3 and instead of kilonewton meter, we just need to write down kilonewton meter per meter. Now it looks to be fine. FCK here is 30 megapascal, and now we need to slightly modify our code. Everything seems to be fine, and the D, we do not have any stirrup here, so you just need to remove that one. Then here, you do not need to use any b for the calculation and also here we need to use any b and here if we divide by meter you can see that it's exactly what we calculated earlier and here also you do not need to use any b for mu calculation as required also you can just remove that and instead of millimeter square you need to write down millimeter square divided by meter so here you can see that it's exactly what we need here also we need to write down millimeter s square per meter and here it shows that we need 2.24 uh, per meter now we can calculate uh, what is the required spacing from here i can just remove the answers uh, require the spacing so a spacing which is required will be one divided by the number that we need in so we can see that it's 446 millimeter or 445 point something then we need to have this uh, uh, euro code a statement for example here we can write down that a spacing in the primary maximum and for example the uh, first a statement which is the general i go with g and then it is minimum of 3h and 400 millimeter 3 times h and 400 millimeter so it will be 400 millimeter then we can copy that 
and here we can write down for a special bending moment concentrated load whatever we call it then it is 2h and 250 millimeter the same for the secondary here i can change this p to s and it was 4h and 600 and the other one is secondary for the special case which was 3h and 400 so according to this we can see and calculate uh, what is the required spacing based on that so then you can just close this box you can have a neat sheet for calculation and here is what you see you just need to put height of the slab nominal cover reinforcement diameter that you are going to use for primary or secondary design bending moment as the given value and then the compressive concrete class and here you can check if compressive reinforcement is not required required a spacing is 445 and here at the end you can select uh, the spacing of the reinforcement that you are going to use that was the end of this video and the example we went through the uh, primary reinforcement uh, designed for a concrete slab with different loading and we assume that the most critical slab would be taken as the design and then we apply the whole reinforcement for the entire slab it would be much easier for the construction side that they are not confused where to put what kind of reinforcement and also it can save uh, labor hours for the reinforcement also we check the detailing which was uh, covered in another video but here we first designed what is the required reinforcement and then we applied the detailing regulation according to Eurocode 2. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.